So today, uh, no surprise to many of you, we're going to still be in the book of 1 John. We're going to actually wrap up. We kind of left two verses hanging last week in chapter 3, verses uh, 23 and 24. We're going to read those, not spend too much time on those. But our focus today is going to be in chapter 4, the first six verses. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. I hope that you have enjoyed our summer sermon series. Try and say that fast three times. Summer sermon series uh, in the book of 1 John. For the past eight weeks or so, we have taken the time on Sunday mornings to just go through this incredible book of the Bible, going through verse by verse, chapter by chapter, looking at this awesome book of the Bible. John has given us so much truth, so much foundational truth of who you are as a child of God. Understanding in this world what is light and what is dark and what is truth and what is false. And I wish I had the time to give you like a a full recap, like a a top 10 moments of where we've been the last 8 to 10 Sundays, but I don't have the time. If this is your first Sunday here or maybe you missed uh, one of the messages in this study, please take the time to go back and listen to these messages. Uh, You can go to YouTube and simply search City Soul Ministries. Uh, We have a YouTube channel and you can listen to any of those messages at your convenience. Today we're going to close out in chapter 3. And then we're going to go on into chapter 4. And we're going to pick up where we left off last week and then move on into chapter 4. So if you want to follow along with me, it'll be up here on the screen for you. Um, Verse 23. And this is His commandment. We must believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as He commanded us. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with Him, and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us, gives, gave us lives in us. Now chapter 4, this is entitled Discerning False Prophets. Listen to this very carefully. This is going to be the bulk of our study today. Starting with verse 1, this is what John writes. He says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the spirit. You must test them. If you have your Bible out today, I want you to underline that. Test them if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the spirit of God. If a false person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist. If you were here a few weeks ago, that word was brought up and we talked about it and I talked to you about what that meant and we're going to talk about that a little more throughout this message today. Which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint. And the world listens to them. Last verse here. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. So closing out chapter 3, John gives us the foundation of our faith. That our faith is to be put in God's Son, Jesus. And love is what we are to be known as. As Christians, obedience to to God is proof that we love Him, and it keeps our relationship with Him strong. Then into chapter 4, we get into this really, really interesting topic. Being able to decipher and decide and have this ability to understand what is true in our world today, what is godly and what is not. Being able to have the ability to know what is truth and what is lies. Church, I cannot even begin to tell you how important this is in your life. Our culture today is so overwhelmed with information that we must be aware. We must be equipped to be able to decide and decipher and know what is of God and what is not of God. Now, sometimes we all know that that's going to be very obvious. We're going to be able to tell what is of God and what is not of God. But other times it's not going to be as easy. There's going to be this blurring of the line, and that's the title of my message today, the blurring of the line, of not being able to know, is this right, is this wrong? Is there this gray area, is this okay to do, or is this okay not to do? The blurring of the line in our lives is where Satan comes in, 
And he is the deceptor. He is the accuser of the brethren. He's the accuser of me and you. And he wants to trip you up. Now, sometimes it's going to be obvious. Sometimes it's not. Today, I want you to leave here understanding first and foremost that evil is all around us, that the evil in this world today is very prevalent. We want to learn from this scripture today that we need to be more aware of that. We need to be and and, and to be aware and know the difference between what is true and what is false. Today, I don't want to keep you here real long. I have a message that's fairly short, but uh, I may get going and may may last a little longer than than what I what I think it's going to. But today, I have two things in your notes. I wanna I wanna point out to you, and I want you to write these down. I really want you to think about these and pray about these major points that I'm going to point out to you today. First of all, I want you to write down the simple line of "Don't believe." all that you hear. Don't believe all you hear. I think this point is one that can absolutely save you from so much hurt in your life, so much struggle in your life. Now the statement is very obvious. Don't believe all that you hear. But let me put it to you this way. How many times in your life have you heard a rumor, didn't realize it was a rumor at the time, to later find out that it wasn't true, but you totally bought into it and thought that it was real? How many times have you been scrolling through your news feed on Facebook or social media or wherever, and you see this article and you just think, oh my goodness, that's got to be true. And then you later find out that it's not true, that it was just a spoof article or whatever. Well, I had a teacher in school who tried to teach our class the truth of this first point of don't believe all that you hear. And he did something that I will never forget. In the beginning of one of our school days, he stood up before his first class And he told them a rumor. Now, he didn't tell the class that it was a rumor. It was an experiment of something he was going to teach us later. He told the class that day something kind of believable. Something kind of believable, but but leaned a little bit more towards unbelievable. What he told the class that day was simply that the school administration had been getting together and was thinking about letting us out of school early that day. So you can imagine the excitement that this brought to the class And when people got out of that class, they were running down the hallways telling people, we're getting out of school early today. You're not going to believe it. But I remember the news getting to me and thinking, wow, that would be incredible. I mean, even 10 minutes of not sitting in class, I'm I'm all for that. But by the time the the rumor had gotten to me, it it was twisted a little bit. What was told to me is that we were not only getting out of school early that day, but every day that week, we were going to be getting out of school early. See, by the time the news got to me, there was already some extra news, some juicier information wrapped up with it, that we were going to be getting out of school every day early that week. Well, to make a a really long story short, by the end of the day, there were rumors going around that school was going to be canceled for the rest of the week. There was rumors going around that summer break was going to be extended that year. And I remember a rumor of kids saying that we were all going to get an A in this teacher's class. Now... (laughs) I know I have to laugh about it too, I mean, it's been 15 years ago, but it's, uh, it taught me so much. I'm not sure what kind of trouble this teacher got into for trying to prove his point that you cannot believe everything that you hear, but it sure taught me something, is you cannot believe everything that you hear. Rumors are out there. There are false things all around us. John talks about it here in verse 1 and 2, and he tells us, do not believe everything that you hear. Let me read it to you again. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God, for there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. Now, evil is alive. Evil is all around us. We are dealing with the spirit world. And actually, God's word has a lot to say about that. In the book of Hebrews, it speaks of angels and says this, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Angels are God's messengers, spiritual beings created by God under God's authority. Now, according to the scripture, there are three major things that angels do. One is we see them protect the helpless. That's one thing that we see. Two, we see angels proclaiming God's message to the people. And then three, in the book of Revelation, we see the angels execute God's judgment. 
Now, I have never personally seen an angel, and I've never had a visit from one. Not only are there good angels who serve God, but the Bible also tells us that there are fallen angels. These are called spirits in the Scripture. Now, if you've read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels speak a great deal of the fact that in Christ's day, they were called unclean spirits. Have you guys ever read that, heard that in the Gospels? Unclean spirits. As followers of Christ, we are warned in the New Testament by Paul to put on the entire armor of God because we are in a battle every day that is more than what we can just see. It's more than just the flesh. There is a battle being waged every day that is a spiritual battle. And John warns us here by saying, don't believe everything that you hear. Don't believe everyone who claims to be from God. Test what they're saying. Test the spirits. Now to some of us, that might sound a little bit scary. So you're telling me, Luke, that there's a spiritual battle going on all around me? Yes, that is what the Bible tells us. Evil is all around us. So many people in the world today are falling victim to the lies of Satan, living and accepting things that are not of God. So many are falling into this simply because they do not know what the Word of God says. There are a lot of phonies out there, a lot of people, a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts, a lot of opinions, a lot of philosophies that might sound good to the listening ear. They may sound good at face value, but up against God's Word, they are not true. Paul prayed in the New Testament that the Philippian church might not grow in their love, but also in judgment and knowledge. Church, you and I need to use our love wisely. You and I need to be very careful of what is going on in our world. We are so overwhelmed with information. There is so much junk in our world today. And John is saying, guys, be careful. Be careful of what you're reading. Be careful of what you're listening to without fact checking. Well, the question becomes, how do we fact check? Well, you know the answer. It's the Word of God. You fact check by the Word of God. Test what is being taught by someone up against the Word of God. Test what the crowd is saying up against the Word of God. Church, do not be deceived. Verse 2, John says, This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. This is where it all begins, in a town called Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and it started with His incarnation. See, the cross and the tomb would mean absolutely nothing. The cross and the tomb would mean absolutely nothing to us if Jesus was not who He claimed to be. But He was who He claimed to be. He was the Lamb of God who was sent to die for the sins of this world. He died. He rose again. And today, He forever reigns. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. The way that you and I can test and determine those false teachers and what is false in our world today is that a person will deny these things about Jesus. They may even say something like this. Yeah, Jesus was a really great guy. He did some nice things for people. He taught some really good ideas and principles. They may even go as far as saying that Jesus was a religious genius and had a lot of really good godly qualities. They may say that he had a lot of knowledge of God, but will they claim that Jesus was God in the flesh? John speaks of the Word in his Gospel. What does this mean, the Word? Who is the Word? Well, he was God, and he created all things, and he became flesh. He was born in Bethlehem in a manger to a virgin named Mary. Jesus came as the payment for the sins of the world. And when a person denies the incarnation, the deity of Christ, then his work upon the cross is denounced too, because that's who he is. Now what the false teachers would do then, and what they try and do in our world today, is to attempt to minimize who Jesus is. They may say nice things about him. They may have good things to say about him, but they won't claim that he was God in the flesh, and he is the only one who can take away the sins of the world. John is fighting the fight against anyone who says any different. Church, Jesus was more than just a nice guy. Jesus was more than just a peacemaker. 
He was more than just a precious child. He was the precious Prince of Peace who made peace with this world by His shed blood upon the cross. The true test to know if a teaching is real or not is find out what a person or a religion or a church or an idea or a thought or a philosophy believes and says who Jesus Christ is. That is important, church. Don't you ever forget it. Now here comes this word again, Antichrist. It's a word that John brought up a few weeks ago in our study, and I took some time to explain it to you. But in verse 3, this is what he says. He says, but if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. Now, the Antichrist will be a physical person who sums up all that is evil. He will be loved, welcomed, and received by an evil world. But the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist is already here. And John is giving you and I a huge warning. He's saying, guys, love one another. Work towards love. Work towards unity. But we've also got to be aware that there is a lot of false in our world today. That the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of things that are anti-God's word, are still here today. For some Christians, for some reason, ever since, you know, Christians have been around, is they've struggled in growing in knowledge of God. Meaning that many times Christians will, they'll, they'll come to, to Jesus and they'll receive Him into their lives. But what I see happen so many times is Christians will just remain spiritual babies. Let me put it to you another way. We just want to stay in the shallow end of the faith pool. We don't want to grow. We don't want to venture out and to share our faith. We don't want to venture out and to read God's Word on our own. No, that's your job, Luke, on Sunday morning to teach me God's Word. No. Every single day of your life, be hungry for God's Word. Be hungry for more of Him and less of you. Do not stay in the shallow end of the faith pool. And for that reason, many Christians will fall victim to false things. Many Christians will fall victim to false antichrist things in our world today. There's a lot going on in our world. So John spends the time to give us this warning to be aware that false teachers will deny the incarnation of Christ. Jesus was more than just a cool guy. He was more than just a nice fellow. Jesus was more than just a guy who did some great things. Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus lived a sinless, perfect life. Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus offered His life as a ransom for the sins of the world. And anyone who denies any of that, it's false. Walk away from it. Get away from it as quickly as you can. Don't be deceived by false teachers. Don't fall victim to things in the world that have the spirit of the Antichrist. Know the Lord. Know the Word. Grow in your faith. Grow in your knowledge of God. And be aware, be aware of what is false in our world today. You can see it in your eyes. Some of you guys are like, oh my goodness, what are we talking about today? This is pretty deep. Luke, you got me a little freaked out today, talking about spiritual warfare, talking about truth and lies, and how do I know what is true? Well, let me ease your mind. Let me direct you to verse 4 today in the second blank in your notes. I simply want to say to you, and I want you to write down, that no matter what is going on in the world, no matter how much spiritual battle, battle is being waged, no matter how much temptation is out there, no matter how much Satan wants to destroy your life, no matter how much you're dealing with, number two today, God is greater. God is greater than any of that. I had uh, number two, God is bigger. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have veggie tails. Some of you have veggie tails. God is bigger than the boogeyman. You know that song? I started singing that song this week because I got to change my point up a little bit. God is bigger. Or God is greater. God is not bigger. So God is, God is greater in the story. God is bigger than it all. Listen to what the scripture says. This isn't from me. This is from God's word. Verse 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. Because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the world. 
Maybe you didn't hear me. Because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in this world. Maybe you didn't hear me. The Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in this world. Yes, amen, that is awesome. And that is what we come back to. There is no reason for you to fall victim to false teaching. There is no reason to fall victim to Satan or to deny anything about Christ because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. See, when you have the Holy Spirit living in you, when you accept Jesus Christ as the forgiver of your sins and the leader of your life, and you are given the gift of the Holy Spirit, there is no reason to live in fear. There is no reason to be crippled by fear because you can overcome the false things in our world today because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Every Christian has the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the reason that you do not need an angel to appear to you to tell you the things that you need to know because you have the Holy Spirit living in you to teach you, to guide you, and to direct you. But see, church, here's the big thing. You cannot stay away from the Word of God. You cannot leave your Bible on the shelf. You cannot leave your Bible app unopened in your phone. You've got to be in the Word of God. Do not put it to the side and expect the, the Spirit of God to lead you as strongly as, as, as the Spirit wants to. You know, part of my job and part of my responsibility and part of my passion is to get people into the Word of God because I know and I've experienced and I've seen the Spirit of God open hearts and protect us and to show us what is truth and what is false. The Word of God teaches us the will and the way of God. And John is saying here to us today that we can test the teaching of men we can test what we hear in the world today. We can listen to things and we can know what is truth and what is false. Does the person teaching accept and preach the incarnation of Christ? If they don't, then we know that that is the spirit of the Antichrist. Let's tackle the last two verses and then I'll let you, let you call it a day and go do your family thing this afternoon. Verses 5 and 6. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint. We all used to be there, right, at some point in our lives where we would speak from the world's viewpoint. Well, then Jesus captures us and we start to speak differently. Our lives are changed. Our viewpoint is different. So those who belong to, to, um, to the world speak from the world's viewpoint. And the world listens to them. But we belong to God. And those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Believe it or not, and I would say that most of you in the room today, probably all of you would believe it, but false teaching and false ideas are very popular in our world today. Just like they were in the Old Testament. You know, when people would fall victim to pagan worship, bowing down to false gods, doing things that were anti-God. Just like they were in John's time. You know, uh, false teachers coming along and saying that Jesus was a good guy, but... Surely there's other ways to get to heaven. To say that Jesus Christ is the only way, that's, that's kind of a, an arrogant thing to say. And just like our world in 2017, the thing with false teaching is this, is false teachers will tell people what they want to hear. They will tell people what they want to hear. Things like, it's okay to sin. It's okay to live your life however you want. It's okay to do whatever pleases you. Just make yourself happy. While these statements may not sound real bad or real harmful at face value, but if they are teaching and promoting things that are against the Word of God, then it is false. It is not true. God is giving us the ultimate warning and reminder. And this is what we studied last week. Guys, following Jesus is not always the most popular thing to do. Being a Christian doesn't mean that you're going to win any popularity contests anytime soon. Because when you open the Word of God, what does it do? It exposes to you your sin. It shows you that God doesn't want you to live that way. That He doesn't want you to live apart from Him. The Word of God exposes us to our sin. But more importantly, it gives us the answer. It gives us the remedy. It gives us the only medicine that can fix us, and that is Jesus. People don't want to hear, I don't want to hear at times, 
that my way of living or thinking or speaking or, or acting is wrong. And people don't want to listen to, to the, they, they need to change their behavior. A false teacher is going to be very well liked and received by non-Christians. I kept praying this week and I was like, God, how can I, how can I close this message today to really hit home with your people? And God just kept laying on my heart, Luke, I've given you the message. Here's the text. That's all you need to say. What I want you to do in closing, hey, Luke, is I want you to have a special prayer for this church. I want you to have everyone bow their heads, close their eyes, and let's have a special prayer this morning that God would strengthen us. That God would strengthen us in knowledge and wisdom and to be able to decipher in our world today what is true and what is not. So if you would, bow your heads with me in closing. Heavenly Father, I, first of all, I praise your name. I praise that you have given me an incredible life. A life that I, I didn't deserve. That, Father, I have fallen short of your perfect and righteous standard many times in my life. That, Father, I have turned my back on you more times than I can count. That I've lived a selfish life. That I've committed numerous, numerous sins. Father, I've walked away from you many times. But Father, your love for me is greater than that. Father, your love for me is bigger than my sin. It's bigger than my anxieties. It's bigger than my worry. It's bigger than anything that I've done. And Father, today I celebrate that. I'm so thankful for that. And Father, today you just laid it on my heart to pray for your church this morning. To pray for strength. To pray for wisdom. To pray that as we go back into our world here in just a moment. Father, sometimes it's easy to be a Christian on Sunday morning. Actually, it's real easy to come in and to sing songs and to listen to a message, take some notes, throw our offering in the offering plate, and then go live our lives apart from you for the rest, rest of the week. Father, you've not called us to live that way. You've called us to take up our cross and to follow you daily to boldly proclaim the love and the forgiveness that you want to offer this world. And Father, this study in the book of 1 John has opened my eyes once again to just that truth. That Father, it's easy to forget. It's easy to kind of dabble in the dark, to be on the fence. Father, you've called us to live our lives for you. I pray for strength and I pray for wisdom for your church today. Father, as we go into a time of invitation, I pray that if there's anyone here who has never asked your son Jesus to forgive their sins and lead their life, that, Father, they would make that decision today. Right where you sit this morning, you can ask him to forgive your sins and to lead your life. But you may say, well, Luke, and I've done some bad things. Me too. <laughs> Me too. And so have the people in this room. And that's why we need Jesus, is we need that forgiveness. You cannot better yourself. You cannot earn your way into heaven. You cannot earn forgiveness. It's a free gift that God has given you through his son, Jesus. And Father, today we thank you for that. My words are inadequate. The best thing that I can do is to continue to serve you and to offer my life as a living sacrifice for you. Father, take the remainder of our service today, our, our invitation time, our offering time, and then it's our closing time today. And may it be exactly what, what your church needs. Father, we love you and we praise you and we ask all these things in your name. Amen.